T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And lift off. The propulsion is nominal. T-plus 40 seconds since the launch of Falcon 9. Propulsion is confirmed. Merlin's look nominal. Power and telemetry are confirmed nominal from the avionics engineer. We're throttling down right now on the Merlin 1D engines. Preparing for supersonic and max Q. Knock one. You've got the call out for Mach 1. We have throttled the Merlins back up to full power. Next event will be maximum dynamic pressure. And there we are. We're going through the thickest portion of the atmosphere at the highest speeds. Now as we continue to accelerate Falcon 9, the air density gets thinner and the loads on the vehicle decrease. A minute 30 seconds, trajectory continues to look good. Come back, Dicho. That D-chill indicates we're now beginning to bleed a little bit of liquid oxygen through the upper stage engine turbo pump to get it ready for ignition coming up in just about 40 seconds from now. Nice view from the ground camera looking up the long plume coming out of the nine Merlin 1D engines. Now major event coming up will be main engine cutoff coming up at just after two and a half minutes called Miko. We shut off all the nine engines. We'll separate the first stage from the second stage, and we will ignite the second stage engine called SES-1, the second stage engine start number one. Begin to throttle down. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And we've Second got successful engine. MVAC full power ignition. The view on the right shows the MVAC engine, the second stage now taking over, carrying the Starlink and Black Sky satellites to orbit. On the left screen, the first stage is continuing without power to coast to Apogee, and you can see the large titanium grid fins beginning to open with the lights of the United States in the background as we slowly head up the eastern coast of America. Now, next coming up will be fairing separation. There's a view of the fairing, and we confirm fairing separation. So the Falcon 9 second stage continues at full power carrying the Starlink and Black Sky satellites to the first of two orbits. The first stage is continuing to coast to Apogee and then it will begin to fall back to Earth and eventually two burns to land on the drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. The trajectory right now continues to look right down the middle. Everything's looking good on Falcon 9. So as we come up on four minutes, we will remind you that we are attempting to catch and recover both ferrying halves now that they've separated on our recovery vessels, Ms. Tree and Ms. Chief. If we make a successful catch, we'll try to bring you these views live. Otherwise, check our social media accounts for updates. Right now, four minutes, 20 seconds of the mission. All is going well. While stage two is doing its job there on the right, stage one is headed back home to, to Earth. Can't quite see it on the video on the left, uh, but it is doing that. And it will do this by executing a series of two burns 
The first burn is the entry burn, where three of the nine M1D engines will light up and slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn, and this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. You can see on your screen that the second stage MVAC is still glowing and in the middle of its burn there, carrying our satellites to orbit. So stage one entry burn is going to start in just over a minute here at T plus six minutes and 21 seconds. Stage one is currently navigating home to Earth uh, using both its grid fins and that small spurt of light that you saw was a nitrogen burst from the attitude control system, uh, which is nitrogen gas that helps to orient and guide the first stage as it heads home. There are four grid fins and four uh, attitude control uh, thrusters on the inner stage of the rocket. In just about 20 seconds here, we will hear the call out for the start of the stage one entry burn. This burn will last 20 seconds. And again, it's a three engine burn that will slow the first stage down as it enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one entry burn startup. Heard confirmation of the stage one entry burn startup. You can see those backlit grid fins with those three engines burning there. Again, this burn lasts 20 seconds. Stage one entry burn shutdown. We've had confirmation of successful stage one entry burn, and we're about a minute away from our landing burn. The landing burn will start at T plus eight minutes, and it is also about 20 seconds Let's long. See, the landing burn should bring us to our drone ship. Of course, I still love you in the Atlantic Ocean. So we have briefly lost that first stage view, but we should get it back when we get closer to the drone ship. We're about 30 seconds out from the stage one landing burn. Again, this is a single engine burn. It's the, it's the engine right in the middle. Stage one is transonic right now. We're about 10 seconds from landing burn start. Stage one landing burn. Heard the call out for the start of stage one landing burn. You can see the clouds sort of lighting up there. Start internal guidance. Stage one landing leg deploy. Wow, look at that stage one sitting on our drone trip. Of course, I will still stage love you. Landing. That was a beautiful view of the stage one as it came down there, lighting the clouds up. And in just about 10 seconds here, we'll have second engine cut off there right on your screen. See you go. We had, we've had confirmation of second engine cutoff, and we're waiting for confirmation of good orbit out of this first burn here. Nominal parking orbit insertion. We're in a nominal orbit, and now we're about to enter a coast phase. So we're going to take a quick break, but we're going to leave you with an animation that shows you where we are in the coast. We'll be back at about T plus 46 minutes and 30 seconds for a second stage relight. Stage two ignition. 
and shut down. We've heard confirmation from the avionics engineer that Global 7, the first of the two Black Sky satellites, has successfully deployed. Global 8 deploy confirmed. And there it is, Global 8 deploy confirmed. The second of the two Black Sky satellites that are on top of the large stack that you see there. So we've got the first two out. There are 57 more to go. Starlink tension rod separation confirmed. Heard the call out that we've had a successful deployment of oh, our Starlink right. satellites. Oh, you can see the video just came back here of them floating away into space. To date now, we've sent 595 Starlink satellites into orbit. Our you can see on your screen there, the satellites are slowly separating from each other, and shortly they will deploy their solar arrays. Now, over the course of the next few days and weeks, these satellites will use their onboard ion thrusters to distance themselves from each other and enter their operational orbits. Well, that brings our webcast to a close, and what a week it's been here at SpaceX. Just four days ago, we saw Crew Demo 2 successfully return home with NASA astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Benkin. On Tuesday, Starship took flight at our South Texas location, and now we've capped it off with our 10th successful Starlink mission to date. As we watch the Starlinks drifting away, getting ready for their weekend, we'd like to thank you, our customer, Spaceflight, the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing the launch, and the 45th Space Wing and NASA Kennedy Space Center for their range support today. Now, if you're interested in future updates about Starlink launches, as well as general updates about future service availability, head over to Starlink.com and sign up.